Hi everyone, today I'm covering a step one review on cardiology and high yield clinical presentations. The first one is someone who presents with a wide and thick split S2 and paradoxical emboli. This is an atrial septal defect. The second one is someone with a high pitch holosystolic murmur at the left lower sternal border. This is a ventricular septal defect. The next one is a loud, harsh, continuous murmur with accentuated peripheral pulses. This is a patent ductus arteriosus. The next one is a blue baby with a systolic ejection murmur along the mid to upper sternal border. Squatting will improve the cyanosis. This is Tetralogy of Fallot. The systolic ejection murmur correlates to pulmonic stenosis. The next one is syncope with exertion, crescendo decrescendo murmur at the left lower sternal border, and IV septal hypertrophy. This is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The next one is someone who presents with nosebleeds, high blood pressure in the upper extremities, and low blood pressure in the lower extremities. This is coarctation of the aorta. This is associated with Turner syndrome. The next one is an athlete with an enlarged left ventricular cavity and no atrial enlargement. This is athlete's heart. So you always want to compare athlete's heart, which has no atrial enlargement, with Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which tends, which tends to have atrial enlargement along with a IV septal hypertrophy. The next one is a high pitch late systolic murmur with a mid systolic click. This is mitral valve prolapse. This is associated with Marfan syndrome. The next one is an old man with syncope, a crescendo decrescendo murmur at the right second intercostal space. This is aortic stenosis. The next one is bounding pulses, early decrescendo murmur at the right second intercostal space. This is aortic regurge. The next one is an early decrescendo murmur at the left second intercostal space. This is pulmonic regurg. So both pulmonic and aortic murmurs are identical. It is a location that differs. The next one is the holosystolic murmur at the apex. This is mitral regurg. The next one is an opening snap after S2 with a diastolic rumble. This is mitral stenosis. So mitral stenosis equals opening snap, OS, MS. IV drug user with hollow systolic murmur at the sternum increases with inspiration. This is tricuspid regurg. The IV drug user is trying to get at the, the fact that IV drug users are increased risk of staph aureus, which affects the tricuspid valve. The next one is someone who presents with an irregularly irregular heartbeat. They are an immigrant to the US and they have a hollow systolic murmur at the apex. This is rheumatic fever. Rheumatic fever has the Jones criteria, which stands for joint pain, murmur, subcutaneous nodules, erythema migrinatum, and syndrome and chorea. The next one is someone who presents with a fever, arithmetis and non-tender macules on the palms and soles, hemorrhages in the nails, a hollow systolic murmur at the apex, and left-sided hemiparesis. This is infective endocarditis. Infective endocarditis is seen in the from Jane mnemonic, which stands for fever, rot spots, ulcer nodules, 
Murmur, Janeway Lesion, Anemia, Nail Bread Hemorrhages, and the last thing, which is left sided hemiparesis, that's the septic emboli. The next one is someone who presents with the upper respiratory tract infection, an S3, and an enlarged cardiac silhouette. This is viral myocarditis. The next one is someone who presents with chest pain that gets better with leaning forward. The ECG shows diffuse ST elevations. This is pericarditis. The next one is someone who has tuberculosis. They have a sound after S2 in early diastole and they have calcifications around the heart. This is constrictive pericarditis. The next one is someone who presents with muffled heart sounds, jugular venous distension, hypotension, a variation in the systolic blood pressure with breathing, and varying amplitudes on the, of the QRS on the ECG. This is cardiac tamponade. And the Jugular venous distension, the hypotension, and the muffled heart sounds are all part of the Bex triad. The next one is someone who presents the stent placement, and now they have the purple motling of skin. This is a cholesterol emboli. The next one is someone who presents with syncope with arm raising, and Differences in the brachial pulses between the right and the left side. This is subclavian steel syndrome. The next one is a someone who has high blood pressure. They are a smoker and they have a pulsating abdominal mass. This is triple A or abdominal aortic aneurysm. The next one is someone who presents with tearing chest pain and a widened mediastinum. This is an aortic dissection. The next one is someone with a history of painless genital ulcers, and now they have a tree bark appearance of the aorta. This is thoracic aortic aneurysm, and this is associated with syphilis, leading to endoarteritis of the vasovasorum. The next one is someone with chest pain with exertion that improves with rest. This is stable angina. The next one is someone who has chest pain at rest. This is unstable angina. The next one is a someone who uses cocaine, has chest pain, and transient ST elevations. This is vasospastic angina. The next one is someone who has chest pain at rest with elevated troponin and no ECG changes. This is NSTEMI. The next one is someone who presents with chest pain radiating to the jaw, elevated troponin, and ST segment elevations. This is a STEMI. Next one is ST elevations in leads 2, 3, AVF, which are the inferior leads, and associated bradycardia. This is an inferior MI affecting the right coronary artery. The next one is ST elevations in leads V1 to V4. This is an anterior MI affecting the, the LAD. The next one is an ST elevation in leads V5 to V6. This is a lateral MI affecting the left circumflex. Next, we will be covering the complications of MIs. 
The first one is sudden cardiac death right after an MI. This is ventricular arrhythmia. A common example is VFib. The next one is day 2 to 7, post MI, someone presents with a hollow systolic murmur at the apex. This is papillary muscle rupture leading to mitral regurgitation. Next one is someone who presents day 3 to 5 post MI. They now have a hollow systolic murmur at the left lower sternal border. This is a intraventricular septum rupture leading to a VSD. The next one is someone who presents one to two weeks after an MI with hypotension, jugular venous extension, and muffled heart sounds. This is left ventricular free wall rupture. The next one is someone who presents weeks to months after an MI with a pericardial friction rub, calcifications, and impaired filling of the heart. This is Dressler syndrome, which is an autoimmune condition. The next one is a young female with a brewy heard near the flanks and very high blood pressure. This is fibromuscular dysplasia. The next one is an old man with atherosclerosis, a high blood pressure, and a brewy near the flank. This is renal artery stenosis. The reason for the high blood pressure is the elevated renin. The next one is someone who presents with very high blood pressure and a hypokalemia. This is hyperaldosteronism. The next one is someone who drinks alcohol or they are postpartum, they have Chagas disease, or they have been exposed to doxorubicin, and now they present with an S3. This is dilated cardiomyopathy. The next one is someone who has a beta myosin gene mutation, a crescendo decrescendo murmur, and an S4. This is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The next one is someone who has just been told that they have been diagnosed with colon cancer. They start to have chest pain and the ECG shows T-wave inversions. This is stress-induced cardiomyopathy that occurs after a stressful event. The next one is someone who's a smoker, has shortness of breath, jugular venous extension, edema in the lower extremities, ascites, and a nutmeg liver. This is right heart failure. In right heart failure, edema builds up in the systemic circulation. And what I was getting at with the smoker is that COPD is one of the causes of right heart failure. The next one is shortness of breath, crackles in the lungs, a high BNP, and improvement with furosemide. This is left heart failure. In left heart failure, fluid builds up inside the lungs, presenting with crackles on the physical exam. I hope that was helpful. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please contact us at the email uh, given below, and I'll see you in the next one.